Louise Bedford here. I'm so excited to bring you part two of our interview with Jason McIntosh. You'll hear Jason's stories, you'll internalise his lessons, and it will drive you to become an exceptional trader. And of course, you know my business partner, Chris Tate. He's direct, he's no nonsense, and he certainly calls a spade a spade. You'll hear Chris and I interview Jason McIntosh. And at the end of this show, remember that you can go to Jason's website to pick up his video series. Go to motiontrader.com.au forward slash talking trading. I know you'll love it and you'll get so much out of Jason's words. Keep listening. You know, I saw this saw this really good interview with Roger Federer recently, and like you, you see Roger, and he's uh, you know, he's got to be probably the, you know, the the coolest, calmest guy in the tennis court. And uh, so I just assumed that was always the case, but you know, it turns out you know, Roger was actually a hothead. Like he just wouldn't pick it, and um, he was talking about his early days. And he said he was. Um, he said he used to. He said he used to. You know, throw the throw the racket at the net, and he'd be you know yelling out at the umpire and giving commentary on a shot that didn't work out. And uh, he says, you know, this one time he was he was sixteen and he's at the training centre, and uh, you know, a shot hadn't worked out. Frustration, and he hurls his racket. You know, takes out a screen, new glass screen, scoring screen or something, and uh, he smashed it. So his penance was he had to clean out the, the, the toilets for the next two weeks or something. And, you know, he's in there, he's you know, serving at his time. And he goes, you know, this is just, I've, I've got to do something about this. It's just not working. And uh, he said it took him two years, two years to, to find what he calls the, um, the, the fire and the ice. So the fire is, uh, you know, the, the driving determination to, to be good at something and to want to win and to want to, want to you know, push yourself forward. And the ice is the emotional control to hold it all together when it's not working and to, um, you know, to, you know you, you, you're down two sets to one and you know, you, to come back, to say, look, I can come back. But then to say, if you don't come back, well, hey, you know, it didn't work today and that's okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm cool with that. And I can take you know, lessons from the failure and I can you know, use it to help me build. And, and this is something that you, you, know, you, you need to do as a, as a trader. And um, because, you know, like you, you look at Roger and once he mastered that, he, his career took off. And I think that's the same with a lot of successful careers. Once people master their, their own self-control, their own emotional control, they become very good at excelling in whatever it is that they do. And from a trading perspective, look, I think, you know, there's no substitute to having the, the control, you know, say, you know, as Chris was saying with the ego, it's like, you know, take the ego out of it and just put the, the control in there. And the, um, and uh, I think if being able to control your emotions and that becomes, you know, that becomes, you know, your, your um, you know, a firewall to self-sabotage. And uh, it can, you know, it, it makes a difference. It can make all the difference between uh, being a fly by night. I've had a few wins, but now I've blown up because I can't control it all to having repeatable success over many years. And I think it's trainable as well. I'm watching a movie at the moment. Um, you know, I'm falling asleep so early at the moment as well. So I'm watching it over a couple of nights, free solo, where this climber climbs without ropes in Yosemite. I've and, seen this. It's amazing. Oh my It's terrifying. <gasps> oh, so, so you jump from rock to, from yeah. one yeah. rock yeah. to the That's other it. across a void oh. and there's nothing, if you miss oh. it, oh, it's a bit of a drop. It's, Chilling, absolutely chilling. And they popped him in an MRI and they had a look at his amygdala and they found that it wasn't firing the way the rest of us have our amygdalas fire. And as we know, the amygdala is the emotion centre. It processes emotion, pushes it through to the hippocampus for memory formation. So if he needs a higher level of stimulation to give him those kicks. I mean, he could have been born that way. But I do think you can train your way into that same state. 
if you are a naturally flighty person, if you are somebody that jumps at your own shadow, there is a definite way that you can calm yourself down and get that routine in your life. You know, I look at you two guys and you're very, very calm people. I think that I'm a little bit more flighty, um, frankly, but when it comes to trading, I've trained myself to take some deep breaths, enter into my spreadsheet, the position, enter into the trading platform, step by step by step by step so that I don't have that emotional like explosiveness. That guy climbing, he was even calculating from a planning perspective where to put his fingers on particular rock formations to get him up El Capitan. And it was just amazing to see. It was it was terrifying. It was absolutely chilling. The, the, I was just going to say the, the, the problem when you have such a high threshold is that the decisions become winner takes all. Yes. And, and as a trader, you can't be a winner takes all sort of person because his decision making process is a double or nothing process. And, yeah. and you can't have that process as a trader. Because Although Jason, he, he did stop climbing when things weren't quite right. He backed out of the challenge. Yeah, and I did think that that was good. But it, it, it's a little bit like that because they've done the same thing with uh, special forces soldiers. But one, one of the, the problems of being a young man entering the military is that your brain is not fully formed. It just isn't. Male brains don't settle down till about 22, 23. We mature later than women. The problem that has is twofold. One, it's a terrible problem for PTSD because PTSD becomes ingrained as a pathway and it's very, very hard to treat. It's immensely debilitating. The second is it primes them for immensely high thresholds of, look, I don't want to say entertainment, but stimulation. And the problem with that is sooner or later, you reach a threshold that is fatal. Traders do the same thing. A lot of traders are double or nothing traders. And it's the word Jason used, repetition. It's the need for repetition that I think kills people because they have this popular image of what trading should be. It should be this thing where you're making hundreds of decisions a day. You're making lots of noise. You know, you're moving money here, moving money there. You're being a complete and utter wanker. But that's not trading. That's being a wanker. Trading is a repetitive process that you do in the same way every single day. And the repetition kills people because they, they don't accept that that is the way it should be. And we've experienced this in the mentor program. We've had people who've had jobs they've considered repetitive. They've left their job to take up trading and gone, oh, crap, it's exactly the same. Well, yes, it is. Because without that mechanistic approach of, I enter here, stop is here, I will exit here, I have this much risk, we're done. Oh, isn't there anything more? No, that's it. But without that process, none of trading works, no matter what people think or what they've been told or particularly what social media tells them. It just doesn't work that way. It's this boring, dull process line of a freaking profession. But it has to be that way because that, in doing it that way, you control yourself. But the rewards are the things that can get you going too. You know, I don't think there are too many people that love trading just for trading's sake. There has to be a carrot at the end of the line. And I think that that's what gets people going. And I love watching that. What about for you, Chris? What are some of the personal breakthroughs that you have had? I, I actually think that one of the mistakes people make when they come to trading is they bring with them metaphors that they've heard. You know, buy when there is blood in the street, the famous Rothschilds quote. What they don't actually understand about Rothschilds is he was a systematic trader who had a better information flow than anybody else. He knew of Wellington's victory at Waterloo before anyone else because he'd set in train an information gathering process to make certain that occurred. That's why he was successful. He couched it in these terms because that appealed to other people. He was mechanistic. He understood the value of information and he understood how to utilize it in front of other people. And for me, there are, there are two things, there are two observations I note in myself. One, trading is a profession of the pause. 
it, it is not a profession of instantaneous decisions. There is no decision in trading that can't really wait until you've taken a deep breath and had a little bit of a think. You don't need to worry about stops because people often say to me, what about stops? Well, they're all automated. Machines do those instantly for you. You don't need to worry about those. It is people's compulsion to buy on impulse that's problematic. And the most important thing for me is the pause. It is stop. And strangely enough, in day-to-day -day life, if people just introduced a pause before they open their mouths, their lives will be a lot better and a lot easier. And the second is this simple notion of surrender. You have no control. So thinking that you have control is an illusion. It, the only control you have is the decision to enter and the decision to exit. The market will go wherever it's going to go, with or without you, whether you're on board or not, because that's its job. You just simply have to surrender to that. It's a little bit like surfing. In surfing, you surrender to the wave. You, you have no control other than the fact that you're out there sitting waiting. Now, you can control how long you wait. You can control where you wait. But once the process begins, you're a passenger. And you need to understand that. Too many, too many traders, particularly males, and I used to see this on trading floors, used to think that somehow they could influence what was happening. And you can't. You just have to surrender. And it's as simple as that. Life becomes much more peaceful when you do that. I don't know if there is a typical journey that you can categorically say across every trader's life either. You know, you just mentioned how guys come in to the markets as well with a slightly different attitude. Some of the males that I see enter the market, they think that they are superheroes and they put on positions that are so large and they don't have any awareness of the risk. And it takes a few knocks to bring them perhaps down to size where they're prepared to educate themselves. Some of the women come into the market and sure, some of them have that attitude too, but usually there's more self-doubt there. There's more the feeling, is this a male domain? Is this something that I can do for myself and for my family? So they're more cautious. And it's interesting to see how that has resulted in a big study by Barbara Nodine. It actually showed that women with the more cautious attitude end up making more money than the blokes who are the gung-ho ones. <laughs> Which is well, the gung ho guys? The gung ho ones always get the risk catches up. Yeah, yeah. sooner or later. Up with people, and if you're if you're in there swinging for the fences, it's just a matter of time before you get bowled at the stumps. Mm. It's, uh, I saw it happen so many times that when I was uh, when I, when I worked at Bankers Trust, it's um, it it was called the you know we were going into the revolving door because there were always someone coming out the other side, and invariably it'd be. It would be um, you know, a, a younger trader with a, who would take too much risk and would would blow up, and they'd be they'd be shown the exit. It's um, yeah, being able to can't, if you're too cautious, then then you can't pull the trigger on a trade. But if you're too gung ho, then you're going to blow yourself up. So it's about finding that that middle point where you're fearful enough of markets to respect them, but you're not so fearful that you can't execute on your on your process actually jason uh, one of our mutual friends um david hobart who is also coming on to talking trading he told me a little story about you he said that your bosses until the results all started pouring in in your account at bt your bosses said to you you know come on mate open up come on be a man you know get that testosterone pumping and you'd say look you know i have my system I will follow that system and I appreciate your input, but I will be doing it this way. And in the time that your results were pouring in, there were so many other people going out the door that had that macho attitude. Yeah, there's, look, there's a, there's a real, real pressure on a, in a bank dealing room to, to, to make something happen, to place a trade. And you're taking a receipt and if you're not, Doing, seem to be doing something, well, you, you can get away with that for a little bit, but you know, you've got to you know, make something happen. And that often means forcing marginal, taking marginal trades. And, uh, and like, yeah, that's just the, the nature of the, of the operation. You don't have the, um, and this is one of the advantages the everyday trader has from, from home, is that they, they don't have a, a their boss looking over their shoulder saying, well, why haven't you placed a trade today? 
they, they can sit back and they can wait for the right setups. They don't have to, don't have to swing at everything that comes, comes their way. And it's, um, yeah, look, some people, some people over trade and, and take, you know, too many positions on and, you know, get in trouble doing that. And then I got in trouble for doing the opposite for, for not, not taking on enough, waiting for the, waiting for the, waiting for the, 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 the right, the right setup. Um, yeah. So yeah. Being out of that environment, I guess it's, it's freed me more to like what I do now, I couldn't do at a bank because I take medium term positions and, and medium term positions involve, you know, drawdowns, which last for more than a couple of days. And so it's, yeah, look, what I do now is out of sync with that, that world. That's more of a, um, a shorter term environment in how they, how they approach risk. And this is the advantage of being private traders for the three of us, because we don't have those pressures. What about the role of mentors, Jason? Who have you had in your life? What are you doing to develop your mindset now? I'd be curious to hear your views. Oh, look, I've had, um, I've had some amazing mentors over the years and you know, they've made a, made a huge difference to, to how I've developed as a, as a trader. And a lot of a lot of that came from my my early time at, at Bankers Trust. Uh, the um, you know my, my my first first boss there when I got my graduate job was uh, it was in the charting department, and you know he he taught me that uh, markets have three phases: there's an up phase, a down phase, and a sideward phase. And he said if you could identify which which phase the market was in, well then you had the potential to make a lot of money. And, and that's always stuck with me because I'd just come from university where the professors had told me that markets are efficient, there are no trends, and nobody really has an edge. And so it, it, his, his mentoring opened my eyes to that whole world of looking at, looking at price action. And, uh, and that's, been the, that's been the foundation of what, what, I've, what I've done ever, ever since. And then, then moving into the dealing room, being around other traders, seeing their strategies, seeing how they enter, how they exit positions, and uh, I remember my, my boss when I joined the foreign exchange desk. He said, "He said, Jason, if you want to fast track your learning, he said, read about people who have already been successful." And so, it, like, I had the advantage of being around a lot of people, like you know, in real life, I could talk to. Um, but then the the next strand to that was reading about other people who had had success in the markets. And um, he, um, you know, my boss. You know, handing me this copy of this book called Market Wizards, which I'm sure oh, yeah, I'm sure I love you know. that book. Yeah, it was written back in the early uh, late eighties, early early nineties. It was a, you know it's a collection of interviews with with top top Wall Street traders. Well, not all Wall Street, but, but predominantly American traders. And uh, and there there were two in particular in, in that book, which really their 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 processes and their their, their their the way they saw the markets was I could really really relate to. And they're the chapters that I read and reread over and over again. And then, um, yeah, really, really it was about learning their ways and making their ways my ways. And, and that's what, what mentoring is all about. It's about, you know, standing on the shoulders of the people who have come before you and it fast tracks. And my, my boss was right. It does fast track your, your progress. So the alternative is that you learn everything by trial and error and, and that can get you to where you want to go, but it usually takes a long time. But if you bring in the experience of, of, of um, someone who can, can mentor you and, and, and show you a, you know, a template, which, um, which I know you and, you and Chris talk about, you talk about a, a, a trading template, that provides you like with a roadmap. It's a roadmap of, of where to go. Now, you may decide you don't follow that map to, to the end point, but it gets you going. And then if you branch off in a different direction, then you can do that. You can build your own your own philosophies around that. But just having that initial map, that initial scaffolding, can it can make the difference between um, a career progressing or a career coming to an abrupt end. I don't think my time at Bankers Trust would have been successful had it not been for you know the, the fast tracking of my progress through being around around um, talented people who I could learn from. If I had to learn from time and error, I would have. You know, I would have run out of time. You know that you really have a short runway at those places to sort of get some momentum, and trial and error wasn't going to work. So yeah, mentoring it's um yeah it's it's uh, it's it's a wonderful thing to to get, and I think the best way if you, you know not everyone's friends with a with a Wall Street trader, and that's okay. You can do it through books, and you can do it through 
you can do it through you know, getting someone else's process, getting someone else's system, like like you you offer or you and Chris offer, and you know I offer through my service. It's like you know then adapting that to to your own ways. Yeah, you're fascinating, Jason. Look. I have just received so much value from you personally. I love the way you approach the market. I love that we have this conjoint evolution going where our ideas, even though we may execute differently, the concept and the core principle is usually the same. I don't think there are too many things we totally disagree on in terms of the core principles. So Jason, where can people get more information about you and your journey, but also about the services you offer? Offer. Look, I've set up a, um, a set up a page for for talking trading listeners. It's motiontrader.com.au forward slash talking trading. So nice and easy, and and that will allow people to to sign up for. Um, I've got a four part. It's a four part training series which talks about the you know the, the five key rules which I spoke about earlier. And and how to uh, go into more detail about how it all works and how they apply to a to a to a successful investment process, and uh, yeah, look, I use a lot of my own my own um, stock trades as examples. So you know, it's it, it's it's great to talk about these big concepts, but then it's it's also nice to be able to like like see it in a real life example. So okay, well, you know, this is how you actually apply it. This is the application of of that rule of you know, buying with the trend or, or giving it room to move or cutting a loss, whatever it may be, you actually see it. And I think through, I think through seeing something, it really helps. You can read something and that's great, but then to actually see it, it really helps it helps imprint it on your, in, in your head. And then it makes it something that you can then go out and try and replicate yourself. And when it comes down to it, that's what it's all about. Replicating uh, a, a process that has a, a long history of being successful and, and, and making that your own. I love it. So that website again is motiontrader.com.au forward slash talking trading. That's the one. That's good. <laughs> and Chris, what other things do you think you'd like to share with our listeners so that we can round out this interview because our time is up now? I, I think one of the things, it's a human trait and it's a human trait to look for differences and to assume that those differences are somehow deal breakers or uh, too large to overcome. But when people look at traders uh, of any sort, uh, the key point to look for, and this, this touches on what Jason said about market wizards, it is to look for the similarities. Look for those things that are continuous across groups or across individuals because Success leaves clues. The great mistake people make is they think that success is unique. No, it's not. It is idiosyncratic to the person because it's theirs, but the mechanisms by which they were successful are not unique. It's just that they found their own spin. They, they found that point in the Venn diagram where all the bits sit and where they sit. And once people manage to get to that point, and again, we come back to this notion of ego and surrender, let go of what you think is right and find what actually is right, then trading becomes a much easier process because you begin to see that there are similarities in people, that people who do well do certain things in a certain way. And as Jason said, if you can shortcut that process somehow, then you won't end up living in a cardboard box under a bridge. Which should be the aim for everybody. Well, yes, it's a, it's a life ambition. It's probably pretty good. <laughs> it's like success is a formula. It's yeah. a formula. It's not random. Uh, luck is involved. I've had luck throughout my career, which has, which has made a difference, which has made you know, key differences at times. But, it's, um, but in general, it's, um, you know, success is a formula. And if you can, you, know, you, you follow it, you are, um, it's, you know, it's, it's all about odds, isn't it? It's about putting the odds in your favour. And uh, you, you, you follow a, a formula of success and you increase your chances of that actually happening to you. 
Absolutely. And the thing that we love about our talking trading listeners is that they are backing themselves. They are putting the odds in their favour of not only having a successful trading life, but also being the best person they can be. We've loved bringing you this interview. Keep listening every week on Talking Trading because we will be giving you trading gems that you'll be able to use and it will last a lifetime. That's our total goal. This started out as our passion project, gosh, about seven years ago now, and we're still going strong and we love bringing you these types of interviews week after week. Wasn't Jason terrific? We just adore the man. I hope you've enjoyed these last couple of weeks where I have literally arm wrestled Caroline Stevens so that I could interview Jason McIntosh. Caroline is going to, of course, be back next week and we will try and keep the arm wrestling down to a bare minimum. So until next week, happy trading. The views represented on Talking Trading are generally nature and do not take into account your objectives, financial situation or needs. Before acting on any of the information, consider its appropriateness in regards to your own situation.